Hey, what up, YouTube? It's your main man, Roger Quinn here, with a tutorial showing you how to do this. Isn't that spectacular? Okay, it's a little Cinema 4D vehicle that makes use of the motor uh, dynamics. And hopefully this tutorial is a reasonably simplified method to show you how to do this. I know there's some good folks out there who've got some very interesting tutorials. Very good too, but sometimes very complicated. I'm hoping this is a simplified explanation of how to get motors working in Cinema 4D to create a simple little vehicle like this. Okay, so let's find out how that was made. So we'll just start with a brand new document. And part of the problem here, I find that when people are trying to work with these motors and connectors and things, the physics simulations in Cinema 4D, is the order in which you do things. So I found that it's a very simple method if you just want to get some wheels rotating on a vehicle. Just run through this process. If you start with Dynamics, there we go, from the Simulate menu, I'm in Release 13. And start with a connector. There it is in the middle of the screen. I'm going to add immediately after that a motor. The reason why I've done that is because this is going to help make sure that the motor and the connector are aligned exactly the way I want them. Uh, for this to work easily, it works best if they are aligned centrally. And I'm also now going to add my cylinder that I'm going to use to make my first set of driving wheels. And notice I've just put all those things smack in the center of our world here. So if I check that in the other views, let's frame all. Okay, frame all, frame all. And we'll see that we've got everything nicely centered in the middle. Okay, and if you do this from the start, you'll find that your wheels will probably behave a lot more uh, predictably. Anyway, uh, the method I use uh, so that I don't have to duplicate this four times is I just divide my cylinder into uh, the illusion of two wheels. And I'm just going to do that fairly quickly by... Oops, not that end. I want to add uh, some height segments. Okay, so something like that will do. Maybe I'll put in eight. And then I'm going to make that uh, object, the cylinder, editable. I'm going to go to polygon mode and I'm just going to fairly quickly just select, turn off select only visible because I want to select right the way through the object. Select all those middle polygons and do a very quick extrude <coughs> down in the center there to create some sort of axle type effect. There we go. That'll do. And then I'm also just going to grab the end polygons now on both sides here. So shift click to get the other side. Okay, and then just do an inner extrude to give me a quick sort of wheel thickness. And then finally a standard extrude just to get a little indentation there. Okay, obviously of course you could do something more elaborate than that. This will get us started. Okay, so it's just essentially one object Okay, designed to make it look like an axle with two wheels. I'm going to orient back round to the default now. So I've got everything going centrally again, and there we go. And of course, nothing will actually yet happen because we haven't attached any of the uh, physics tabs or the motor or the connector. But as I said, they are still aligned properly the way that we need them. Next thing I'm going to add is something just to represent uh, what would be our, our body of our vehicle. Okay, now in this example, I'm just going to use a very, very simple cube that's been squashed down. I might make about 250 by, I don't know, 50 or something. There we go. And pop it up there. I'll just check that in the side view. And of course, at the moment, it's just going to look like a trailer or something. Uh, that'll do. And I might just move it over to one side. So I guess what we're going to make here is ending up looking like a little trolley or something. But from here, hopefully, you'll see how you can make that more elaborate later on if you choose to make a more interesting looking vehicle. I thought I'd keep it simple. All right, so the next step of the process we need to do is to connect the driving wheels, which will be our cylinder. I'm going to rename that and call it uh, wheels. And I'll rename the cube and call it body. Let's 
going to be our vehicle body or whatever it is. I'm going to use the connector now to connect those two things. And I shall click on the connector. I shall drag my body object to the object A and I'll draw, uh, drag my wheels to object B. And if we have a bit of a look at that in this view, okay, we'll see that we get something that looks like a, a bit like a shock absorber. Okay, and really what that graphic there is doing is indicating that our wheel object is now connected essentially as a physical thing to the body. And what that's going to mean is that when we drive the wheels with the motor, the body object knows to move along with the wheels. Okay, so the body itself is not driven, the wheels are driven, but this is an important step to actually make sure that the object that you want to represent the vehicle body is going to move correctly with it. Okay, so that's how those things work you actually drag and drop the relative things inside. Now we're going to do a similar thing now to get the wheels to actually uh, be affected by this motor. Okay, when you click on the motor, you'll see you um, on the motor um, physics object, you get object A, object B. In this particular case, we've only got one thing we need to be concerned with, which is our wheels object. I shall drag that into the object A tab. So that now, uh, this is uh, now representing the fact that the uh, motor knows that it's driving the wheels object, which of course was our original cylinder. Okay, and uh, of course if I was to hit play or do something, nothing would happen yet. And that's because we don't actually have any physics tabs or tags uh, applied yet to our body or our wheels. And of course we also don't have a surface for that to be interacting with. So let's quickly fix that up. I'm just going to add a plane to our scene make that big enough for it to run along and do something. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to drop that down so that it's just sitting underneath the wheel object, which it's doing. Okay, in fact that's very important. I should just focus on why I did that. I just need to check that my wheels are smack on the surface, which they are. If they're not, this object will appear to fall down and it may not actually behave sensibly. So that's working and now I just need to uh, add the physics tags. So on my plane object, which is my ground ground plane, I'm going to Cinema 4D tags, oh sorry, simulation tags, you goose, and I want a collider body for the ground, and on the car body and the wheels I'm going to add simulation tags, rigid body, same thing for the wheels, simulation tags, rigid body. Okay, Let's hit play. Uh, and just for those of you who aren't familiar at all with physics, the significant thing here is we're not keyframing anything, okay? Nothing is actually requiring an animation track at this point. Uh, it's because the physics are going to take care of that and will create movement automatically. So if hit the play button, let's see what happens. And it kind of looks weird, but it's actually working perfectly. The body, as soon as I hit go, okay, as soon as you hit the play button, it means that those physics tabs, uh, tags, know to, I keep saying tabs, I'm sorry about that, they're tags, um, know to activate immediately, okay, and of course what that means is the body then assumes it's got a weight, it's connected to the axle, so the front part of that stays up and the back of the body drops down, it hits the floor, because the floor's got a collider tag on it, and the wheels, if I can just turn on the wheels, you'll see are rotating quite a bit. They're actually spinning quite a bit too, okay, because we are yet to go in and modify the uh, settings inside these tags for friction and things like that. Anyway, so far, so good. That's actually doing what it should do. So now to com complete the concept of it being just a basic, simple little vehicle with four wheels, I'm just going to duplicate the wheel, the motor and the connector just rotate my view around a bit um, so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so just uh, control, drag. Okay, I'm on a Mac here, so I'm using control to duplicate that. Um, uh, you could, of course, just copy paste um, if that's confusing. Okay, so I've got a duplicate, and if I now move that duplicate in my scene, I'm just going to go to the side view so I can see that I'm doing this in the right position. So I'm going to go down to this view. Sorry, click them, in, uh, select them again move all that over and just put that, you know, roughly at the back of that thing there. Okay. And I'd think, yeah, that's all good, but there is a 
minor change I have to make, my connections and things are still actually connected to the front set of wheels because my tags, okay, inside these are still uh, got the wrong connections. So just to make it really clear, that duplicate I made there, I'm going to call back wheels. Maybe not with the double K. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure that my motor, um, my second motor here, okay, is actually driving the back wheels. At the moment, it's still the front wheels, so I'm going to drag back wheels into that. And I'll also double check that my connector, my second connector, which this is called connector.1, is connecting the back wheels to the body. And the body is right, but wheels is wrong, so I'll drag back wheels into that. Okay, I hope that was clear. So that the front uh, set of wheels has still got the first motor and the first connector. The back set of wheels is using the second motor and the second connector. Okay, so uh, let's just check that out. Uh, I duplicated the physics tab, the rigid body, on the back wheels when I did that. So it, it knows it's a rigid body, so that should work. And let's have a look. Go back to frame zero and hit play and see what it does. And there we go. There's our little vehicle running along. Uh, and it's running on pretty well. But as I said, so that's pretty cool. It's working and you could do a whole lot with that just as it is. But if you were using this inside an animation where there's other objects interacting, of course, the timing of this would no doubt be fairly important. And that's going to be controlled by now a lot of fine tuning of the settings that are in here. Uh, first and foremost, I guess it's going to be the speed of these motors. So as I said, when you look at the wheels, uh, when I hit the playback, you'll actually see that they're spinning quite a bit and they're actually um, uh, spinning a lot. Okay, so that means a whole of the force that the motor is interacting or creating there is just being lost because the problem there is our physics tags on the plane and indeed on the wheels have got the default settings of a bounce of 50, friction of 30, etc. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to tell the floor to have friction of 100%. I'm actually going to turn down the bounce. Now the bounce is going to uh, throw in, you know, basically the simulation of it sort of literally bouncing a little bit. I guess they do this because the very simple, quick default thing you would often do with physics is like a bouncing ball or something. So they've put settings on there that simulate that reasonably well. Uh, we'll put a little bit in there to um, put a touch of bounce, but more importantly, 100% friction on the floor. So now let's check that out. Select the wheel, one of the wheels and see what that's doing. It's working a whole lot better now. Okay, that now appears to be, it's not really slipping or spinning, and it's in fact interacting quite well. Uh, sometimes, depending on what you've made, you also could find that you need to change those friction settings on the uh, rigid body tag itself on, on the wheels. Okay, but this seems to be working pretty well. Okay. So, oh, I could rattle on forever about the other things you could change there. Um, you can introduce all sorts of funky things. I suppose I should just very briefly uh, talk about the speed of the motors. Uh, the default setting on the motors when you click on them is to have this thing called regulate speed. It puts in a um, rotation, an angular target speed, and a torque setting. Uh, you can, of course, adjust that. You can also change that from regular speed to apply force, in which case you just get a torque setting. So as an example, if we bump that up to you know, 100 torque, I'll do that on the other motor as well. Change to force, 100. OK. Reset that to zero and hit play. Uh, play. This will probably go pretty crazy. And there you go. So let's have a look at what that was doing. I'll just click on one of the wheels and let's watch the rotation speed. It's going bananas. And understandably so when you think about it because we just told that motor to have an enormous amount of turning force and it's just too much for it to deal with and so of course it's doing that. Now you think if you had an electric motor or something that you um, put on some huge turning speed and you might have even had this experience in a workshop perhaps where something goes really bananas and it does this and flies up and hits in the head and causes all sorts of problems. So um, that's kind of doing a pretty good job actually of simulating real world stuff. So what you want to do is of course bring that back down to a more sensible setting. Let's try 33 or something, like a third of that speed and just see how that works. So I've just changed it on both motors, just click on one of the wheels now so that we can see how much turning force there is better but of course you can see we've still got slippage going on now if you 
did indeed want some sort of ridiculously fast motor and the wheels are spinning like that, that's of course where you're going to have to go in and change the settings on your collision tag on the wheels, okay, so the rigid body, and change the friction setting once again. Okay, so if you want it to grip completely, let's try 100%. I'm going to turn the bounce down once again so they're not bouncing around as much. And I'll try that. So bounce 20 on the other wheel, oh, on the back wheels there, 100% friction. And let's see what that does. Oh, sorry, I was just going to highlight one of the wheels so you can see the turning. And there we go. We're getting now pretty good grip and yet it's now moving, of course, significantly faster because it's now using that turning force to interact with the surface. Okay, so you could go on and on fiddling with all these basic settings inside these things, which I recommend you do, just to have a uh, experiment and see what they do. That's the only way indeed to learn, to find out what those different settings will do. You can go into mass and force and blah, 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 blah. But in a basic form, that's how you get uh, two simple cylinders to look like four wheels using just two motors uh, to drive a little vehicle along. And I tell you what, you know, probably 90% of the little kind of vehicle-y things you might want to physically simulate, you could do this way. You don't really need to have multiple motors and things if you're just doing something fairly simple. So enjoy, try that out and see how you go. Bye now.